Ding we'll Jun, we'll see how break. he plays today, I guess, with Ding. We're never quite sure, but like I say, he picked up his third UK crown 11 months ago, so we live in hope that he'll play some good stuff here today. I think he'll need to. John Higgins, as you heard from Radzi, knocked in a 147 break just the other day. And I think John looks better than he has for quite some time. It's going to be a premium you would expect with these two players of getting that cue ball where it is now, tight to the bulk cushion. Both players, when they get in, ferocious scorers, two of the best break builders in the game. So safety play could be a big factor in this match. Yes, John Higgins has been in the Champion of Champions every year since 2013, the first time it was played. But he's all normally won something or been part of the World Cup winning team. But this year, as I say, he comes in off the ranking list as we only have 13 champions of the 16 players in. The other three were the highest remaining ranked players and John is one of those. seen in the previous semi-final how important it is to get a quick start in these short matches and John Higgins has got first opportunity here not sure if the black's available to left corner I can tell by the way he's played that One. obviously it's not but it's still a pretty decent opportunity this Yeah, short matches then, of course, best of 11 tonight. It would be any top player's ambition to get out of this best of seven frame clash into tonight where the matches are longer and you can relax more. But the format is unique. We don't Six. have any other tournaments played in this same way with four players ending up with one semi-finalist at the end of each day. Seven. table looked to be a beautiful pace in the first match. 11. It was very fast. The kind of table that John Higgins enjoys. He doesn't want to be hitting balls hard. Yeah, Rasson tables 12. used for this event and indeed the Championship League, different to the usual star tables for the rest of the season, but as Stephen pointed out, I think it's safe to say they're playing equally as well. Good for scoring, not necessarily that the pockets are bigger, it's just that the tables are so beautiful to play on, and the ball's spread open, as I think Ken Doherty mentioned. The scoring is the premium here. 19. He'd like to leave himself level on the black here with an angle to go into the bunch 20 it's not quite got that angle a little bit straight I normally don't like to leave it till after you've put the last loose red before going into them you keep that loose one just a little bit of 27. insurance if the split doesn't work out but put all these eggs in one basket here needs an angle now of the next colour may be able to play for pink to left corner and leave that red that's just to the right of the bunch into the right corner. Certainly in putting that you would open the reds. 28. Well, if he's dead straight just leave the cue ball where the pink is. If he's got any sort of angle he could possibly play topspin into the reds here. Never easy that shot when the cue ball and object ball are quite close together to generate the amount of topspin to open 34. the reds. 
So I think he was definitely playing for an angle in the black a couple of shots ago, but didn't get it. And that's end of break. I think this red will cut to right corner. I mean, a little bit disappointed, John. The break to finish so early. Higgins, 34. When Ding Jun Wei won the UK Championship, it, it sort of came out of the blue. It, you felt he hadn't shown anything before it. And of course, when he won, he said, I'm back. But really, his form hasn't improved by his very high standards since then. Glimpses of it. But the fact that he won the UK Championship, like I say, for the third time, just underlines his pedigree, reminded everyone what a good player he is, great player he is. But the man is playing has already beaten him here recently. Yeah, I thought Ding would get to that level. Well, he was first. He won five ranking tournaments one season, but I thought he would be regularly at the winning level of the likes of a Sullivan, Trump. Maybe not so much John the last couple of seasons, but what? certainly before that. Neil Robertson, Selby, regular winners. But no, he's, he's, he's fallen below that sort of top rung of players. The serial winners. I just wonder if it comes down to motivation at this level, Stephen. You're Eight. always incredibly motivated to do well. And John Higgins is exactly the same. But with Ding, Nine. I often wonder, and we always want to see more from him. It's just there are no easy matches. And this is certainly not one for him today. Yeah, I think the difference, you know, when you see the likes of the Sullivans, the Selbys, Trumps, Robertsons, Higgins. 16. Even when they're not playing well, they look like they're still, they want to be there and they're giving it 100% or ding. A lot of the time, you have 70. to say, he doesn't look like that. Meanwhile, John Higgins well on his way, you would think, to win in this first frame. You'd be surprised if he didn't from this visit. 24. Twenty-five. Yes, and his scoring seems to have gone up a notch from what we've seen for a couple of years. Not only the one four seven three days ago, he made one at the Crucible, his first there. And of course he's one shy of 800 career centuries. 31. Can make one here, but the frame at this stage is much more important. 32. It was frame ball, but the next ready field will absolutely guarantee this frame. 40. Very quickly seems to have got the pace of the table. 53. He has been here all the way through. Didn't go home after the Championship 54. League, which only finished, like I say, a couple of days back.
awful lot of snooker being played here in Milton Keynes at the moment for obvious reasons. And this venue looks terrific, I have to 61. say. All credit to the people that made this happen. Never going to be 62. easy to make each tournament unique, if you like, but they've all appeared slightly different in the way that they've been set up. Sixty-nine. John Higgins, sixty-nine, and Dufresne. Oh, disappointing, no century break, but the perfect start for John Higgins. First blood to him, and he leads Ding Xun Wee by a frame to nil. So a very good start for John Higgins. Dingen will yet to pot a ball. Frame two about to get underway. I was looking at the, the arena there when the camera was panning. It's a little, little giant spider, isn't it? <laughs> Very different and uh, I say very nice to see. In the absence of an audience, which of course would be even nicer than any of this, but it does look pretty spectacular. Wow, just a bit of pace on this. Needs a bit of help here, and he hasn't got any. Yeah, it's interesting. Sometimes this this situation, when a bad shot could actually create an opportunity for you. Ding Jun Wee's opened the reds up, which is going to put a little bit of pressure on this long red, John Higgins, especially if he's leaving the cue ball down the scoring end of the table. Mm, very confidently what? played. But you see, what he was leaving should have missed that. Well, they made his 11th maximum two or three days ago, but he couldn't really place the ball any Eight. better. He wanted to make one here. I guess the other point nice. is it's almost as difficult to play on a different colour than the black. Yeah. It's not as if yeah, at sure. this stage you would be thinking that way, but like I say, it's 
the obvious ball to play on. It's only when you get to about nine reds and blacks that uh, it really becomes a, a focal point for most players. Obviously, there's Tatiana Williston, our referee. Wife of tour player Ben Williston doing the honours in this game. Speaking of 147s, so I remember a match these two played in the UK Championship. It just goes down, Stephen, as a 9-4 win for John Higgins was up at uh, when the UK was played in Telford. But 7-1 after the first 17. session, John Higgins. I was on commentary, and the only frame ding one in that session, he made a 147 break. Now it goes to show you, it just wins you a frame. John comfortably winning the match. It's amazing if you get another close-up of John Higgins, how much he physically 24. shakes. You can see the head shaking there. It doesn't affect his play. 25. It's one of those mannerisms. But these reds are just situated beautifully. Okay, that red in the, the right hand cushion is not easy. 32. Might be thinking about that at the moment. Had a little glance at it, which says to me that he's thinking about at least taking all blacks with these reds. If you've just recently made one and you're confident in your game, you feel you're scoring. 33. You do think of things, even this early in a frame, he's only 33 points ahead. He'll know what an opportunity this is. And Neil mentioned already, black's the easiest colour to play for. Forty-one. Mm, just lost the cue ball slightly. Forty-eight. Still play for black here. It's just a matter of dropping this red in dead weight automatically on the black to the same pocket. Forty-nine. Just a little bit awkward the way for pot and reds to this left corner pocket. The three reds to the left of the pink. There's one there that you could see it closest to the black. You'd like to get rid of that one. That's just Making pot and reds to the left corner a little bit tricky. It's played on it and it looks to be perfect. 56. there sliding absolutely straight on the black he wants to play for a red to left middle here it's getting closer to the point where the frame will be won mathematically hmm that kiss has not worked out well for 147 okay the 64. frame's important more pro probably more important to win but he had his eyes on that 147 again yeah, we'll find out how much he's thinking about it here because it's very easy to play on a different colour. It's also very easy to play the red into left middle back up and down the table for the black. In practice, he definitely would have played that. 65. A 
as you can 72. see, the equation is one more red and another frame will be gone. Ding Jun Wee, who's not getting a shot. Rob, it's 70, not 72. Put the blue ball. 71 now. Thank you. Perhaps the score's not quite right in the arena. It's all about numbers. I'm afraid this frame is gone. Yeah, Ding Jun Wee, yet to pot a ball. 78. We yeah, pot one in this frame. Seventy-nine. Get started, if possible. Easier said than done. It's the, the brutal thing about snooker when your opponent's at the table playing like this. There's absolutely nothing you can do about it. Eighty-six. Eighty-seven. Ninety-four. Ninety-five. What a brilliant break. Meticulous. Superb. His career, 800th century. 100th century. I get the feeling he'll end up making over a thousand as of course Ronnie O'Sullivan has done quite when that happens I don't know 45 years of age now John but gives me the impression he's playing better than he has for a while quite a while since he's lifted any 110 major silverware he's a previous winner of this event and I think it's around the corner 111. So no break of as many Jenny as 145, 111. but a very dominant display so far from John Higgins. Another frame, another century, is 800th in that frame and already He's in command. He's 2 0 up over Ding Jun Wei. John Higgins leading 2-0. Dijon Wee 
yet to score a point. Thank you, frame three. Ding Jun, we to break. I guess his recent win over Ding Junhui fresh in the memory of both players. They played the week before last at the English Open and John Higgins winning that 4-1. He mentioned pre-match that it wouldn't matter and probably right, but it kind of takes any pressure off him having won so recently against his opponent. And he's knocking them all in, isn't he? That's another terrific pot. One. I think the point you made, Stephen, about safety, maybe it means more in the game now than ever, because if your safety isn't good enough, you're, you're not going to get any shots. And you can see how confident John is. He didn't play it that long pot to get the cue ball back to bulk, consciously keeping the cue ball for a colour. Now, has he got an angle to put the red above the black? into the right corner pocket and Six. nudge the, the red to the left of the black away. So it's, it's a little bit too much angle possibly to play that shot. That's what he was hoping for in pot in the blue. Not guaranteed to finish nicely on the black here. There's a bit of space between the red and black. that well. That's Seven. a great shot. And the, the other red going near the pocket as well. Yeah, it looked like it might be a bit chancy, but it didn't appear that way, the way he executed the shot. There are times when you pot a ball and you don't really know where the cue ball's going to finish up, or where the object ball, or any other balls. Got a, a message yesterday from a gentleman called Jimbo O'Reilly who reminded me that 14. yesterday, the 1st of November, was the 100th anniversary of the birth of Ted Lowe, the great commentator. Passed away in 2011 during the championship. Talking to great commentators. 18. Best wishes to David Hendon, who's will be back with us very soon, just recovering, having tested positive for COVID recently. Just keeping Dave's seat warm for a while. Twenty-two. Twenty-three. Uh, John Higgins at his best has always been absolutely relentless in the way that he scores. And I just felt that he was another player that perhaps had shown the odd sign of so much fatigue but just Best as we'd seen it all before but there's some renewed vigor in his game right now it's there it's definitely come back whether it's a different cue or something different about this new feral that he's got this titanium feral something has inspired him 31 yeah it's kind of last sort of four or five years become more of a streaky player he goes on sort of runs of three four months where he just plays brilliant and then he kind of disappears for a wee while so maybe we're going to have a period in the next two or three months a lot of big events coming up UK Championship not far away Masters he looks to be as confident as I've seen him for a long time Well, he's 251 nil up in points, and you'd get the feeling there's a few more to come here. It's a nice target off the blue. This bunch of reds to go into. Thank you. 37. I was thinking it may have been tempted by the red to left corner. Only because it's such a big target. 
to split the reds from the blue. And he's obviously got other ideas. I may just play just a little brush off the red to the left of the pink that's in the bunch. He knows that red that's in the open should be on. Well, it looks like he's been, at first glance, he's been unlucky. Everything's covered each other 45. to left middle. Maybe a possible pot to right corner. Unlucky there, played that well. Mm, Joe right, Higgins, right. forty five. It's a sign of his confidence taking that red on, but he knew he was leaving the one to left middle at, at least and he's left one over the right corner as well so chance for Ding Jun Wei not potted a ball yet in this match but when you're at this level of game that Ding Jun Wei and John Higgins the likes are you only need one chance to get back into the match now just starting to look at the record for the unanswered points which this goes in doesn't matter anymore Yes, it actually yeah. was, or well, the record, that Ronnie O'Sullivan, 556 in the Masters against Ricky Walden, but there wouldn't have been enough frames for John to beat that anyway, I don't think, best of seven. Anyway, it's good to see Dean with a chance, but having been left cold, he's now got to find something quickly. a very good chance. Six. I mean, if the scores were level in the match, you would think you'd know, be disappointed not to win the frame at this visit, but 2-0 down. Just potted his first couple of balls. But as I say, at this Seven. level, this class of player, he should be wanting to jump all over this chance to get back into the match. I just wonder if you've got any ideas of moving that red on the right out while the other red is over the pocket as a reserve. You're going to need that red on the, uh, the top side of the middle pocket. 15. It's nice to know you've got one on as backup if he does play that shot. He's not got the angle here. Having had no table time, got to adapt to the conditions, never mind. 20. The fact that his opponent, John Higgins, has been so impressive so far. 28. Yeah, I was just wondering if he plays for pink to right corner, he could possibly play that shot. You mentioned Neil, if he has an angle in the pink, doesn't look like he's got enough angle, but he could have played cushion first, just past the middle, take that red off, knowing he's always going to have the win over the, the green pocket. I don't know what kind of angle he's got in the pink. Maybe a little bit too straight, is it? Step by step, he's just getting himself back into the frame, but not so easy to put that chance to good use and win the frame here. Not yet. Well, one or two reasons why he might not.
Not quite crunch time here, but we're not far away 43. from the key shot in this frame. John knows that chance he might not come back to the table if Dean can get the other red in play. Yeah, I'll leave the cube over the red as he's got to play the shot now. Just miss the right middle pocket, cushion first. You don't have to play a lot of pace. Literally just move the red out two or three inches. Hmm. It's one thing you couldn't afford to do was hit red first. That's a poor shot, you have to say, for someone of things class. Fifty. I just wonder, Stephen, if the fact that you mentioned the middle pocket, it's easy to hit the, the bump on that shot and miss the red altogether. Maybe that was on his mind. All is not necessarily lost though. Of course where the red is now it's, it's definitely able to get on it. Fifty one. Not now. Decision time, he's got the absolute stonewall snooker here. Can't fail if he goes in behind the green, but you just feel what will be his advantage of doing so. Is he going to gain one? Yeah, and the fact Ding hasn't pinched the frame in that visit. No, this frame has become very big in the context of this Didn't match. 51. Sacrifice putting the green safe to get a good cue ball, but he hasn't got the snooker. Can't believe he's put the, the green set personally. I think he'll surely need it. I think it, you might as well just drop him behind it if you're going to play that shot. John coming around to look. There's a possibility the red may go in the yellow pocket here. Cable okay, coming back to safety. the first close frame of the day. Didn't get any in the Neil Robertson Jimmy White match. And this one is uh, not as one sided as all the others we've seen. Sometimes as we know it is the close frames which do make all the difference. Frames that you win that you should lose or vice versa. Huge frame though. More important you have to say for Ding and Wee than John Higgins. John Higgins was to win it, you know, 3-0, you can't really see any any way back for Ding. You can see this red, you can see it half ball, but he's still playing cu off the cushions. He thinks that's the way he can get it to safety. He's actually played a very, very good shot. Hasn't he just? As you say, there was plenty of red sticking out. from John Higgins, it really is. Being under the ball cushion to get the cue ball back to that ball cushion. And a superb shot. So when I mentioned safety play might be very important in this match today, it's certainly become the most important factor in this little passage of play. Normally in this kind of situation, say first mistake will cost you the frame, but certainly not where the where Ding Junwee's put the green.
I think we can safely say that uh, we're going to see some big breaks this week. Um, standard of players here, all of the big trophy winners in the last year. The players that haven't won are here on the ranking list, like the likes of John Higgins, Mark Allen, David Gilbert. And they're all big scorers as well. So I think it's going to be a week of good breaks, brilliant snooker. There they are, some of them. See Scott Donaldson, you may not have seen a lot of him because Ding Jun we've seen plenty of him. After Ding won the UK Championship, he lost in three tournaments in virtually succession to the Scotsman, Scott Donaldson. Here because he won the Championship League, although we've had a few of those this 2020. And if he gets this right, he could snooker John Higgins behind the green. He can get right in behind. Cushion first, knock the red away, leave the cue ball in behind that green. Just nudge the green out a little bit as well. Maybe potable now the green to right middle. You called it Stephen, it was a terrific shot all the same. Well, Dean. No emotion, John Higgins just a big puff of the cheeks after that shot. This is a horrible snooker to hit. I don't know if he can go one cushion unless he plays it with a lot of so much swerve, isn't it? Left hand side. Fun. Dean Junwee, oh, seven. There. Free ball. In a roundabout way. You wouldn't be grudge ding that. I'm sure Ding regrets that Black shot ball. he played before. Putting the green safe. Because that's the obstacle you would think. Though black counts as a red. One. He's not come nicely in a colour here. I'm going to say if we take pink and then red black, we would leave John needing snookers. Or leading ace needing ace snooker, I should say. Very nice. He must have been a little bit frustrated and having to play such a tricky blue. And dealt with it very well. So red, pink, yellow will leave John Higgins needing a snooker. And maybe Ding knew Seven. all along, that's why he put the green safe. <laughs> well, he probably couldn't have known John was going to knock the black in and leave the free ball, but as you say, it's worked out in his favour. A good shot on that blue, wasn't it? I suppose he thought he could block the pocket had he missed it on the red. But the difference tells you there, 26 30. ahead, 27 on, that this is frame ball and he needs this one. He really does. Fifteen. But it is only one snooker, so the frame is not over just yet. Junoy, 15. I hadn't even thought of him going for it in the middle. <laughs> thought it was too acute an angle. It may have been, in fact. nagging worry that you might going off playing out of a snooker if I felt that he would miss it but that would have been the most likely way he would give the points away
I think Ding will definitely be on his guard here. This frame is not over. He knows that. Always a bit of a worry when you leave a ball over a pocket. You probably need a snooker that he could get the cue ball into a space where he will get one from his next shot. Three. John Higgins, three. Almost a free shot here, just to end the frame. A oh, little surprise he didn't just try and pop that and finish the frame there. No, I don't see a point of that shot at all. I'm just trying to be too clever, I think. Just pop the brown. Well, I certainly backed him to pot it. Just off straight, hand on the table. Now he's given John a chance. But he hasn't really taken. Got away with one a little there, Ding. going to see him he may just send the brown round the table and leave the cue ball <laughs> behind the black there after refusing the last brown which is almost a more plausible shot he's making heavy weather of winning this frame unlike the ones the early two frames that that john picked up in a couple of visits yeah the only thing strongly in Ding's favour as the colours are not in great positions to get snookers. Blue's in a slightly better position now. The reason John didn't pot the brownie wants to keep as many balls on the table as possible. Give himself targets. Blue will, you would think, possibly come into play here. Send the brown somewhere near the pink. Cue ball in behind the blue. <laughs> He's played some shocking shots, you have to say. John Higgins trying to get snookers in this frame. Very unlike him. Three snookers now if John decided to carry on, which I suspect he won't. Danger we four. Yes. 
John Higgins can see Ding Jun Wee finally picks up that third frame. And he's got himself back into this match now, but it's still John Higgins who leads by two frames to one. Day one of the champion of champions. Frame four, John Higgins to break. Neil Robertson already through to find out who he's playing tonight. Will be this match. John Higgins 2 1 up on Ding Jun Wee. Neil Robertson earlier. Whitewashed. Jimmy White. ask you Stephen I heard you mention that the comeback how's it going and, and have you entered the UK championship no I haven't entered the UK championship no but it's going very well thanks for asking you that's all right I know you're interested worst comeback ever so <laughs> far it doesn't involve playing any matches does it <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing it don't get me wrong but Every time I look, see if your name's on the list, N never there. I'll text you, you'll be the first to know. I mean, for all the players on the tour, it can be inspiring watching the leading players like this as they are now and some it might be demoralizing because the standard they've got to reach players on the tour who we don't see this far down the the list where you get to the top players the top matches and John has been there and done it for so long you must have known him a long time he must go back a long way yeah I used to practice every day with John back in Sterling many many years ago when John was a teenager yeah you mentioned the standard that you got to get to I mean we've seen it in the first match this afternoon Jimmy White who's obviously a legend of the game but you know, just can't compete really you have to say at this level anymore completely outplayed by Neil Robertson 
So it's certainly daunting for me thinking about coming back and playing matches against these guys, but I just, you know, just feel like I miss the buzz. No expectations, but just want to get out there and play matches against them. Yeah, and Ken's playing well, Ken Doherty. I saw him at breakfast, you know, he's starting yeah, to play well. great snooker. It's inspiring to know that he's been around a long time and he still can do it. Had some good stuff last week in the Championship League. stopped in his tracks a little bit in this match John Higgins he was in in the third frame Ding hadn't potted the ball a little bit unlucky with his attempt to go into the reds they had a tricky red missed it and from then it's been sort of pegged back in this match Ding's right back in it we always talk about turning points in matches and perhaps that was one John Higgins looked like going 3-0 he would have gone 3-0 if he left himself an easy red to left middle when he split the bunch. When's this going to reach? Doesn't look like it. Foul. You miss. John Higgins, foul. You're right, though. It is fine margins at this game. John looked to be in command, like you say. And as you pointed out, if that split goes his way, he probably wins the frame there and then. And you're looking at being looking to pull a ball, never one win a, win a frame. But in a short match, I guess, John. it can work both ways. He's only a frame down. Stings and weak. Got a positive record as well against John. He actually leads on the head-to-heads. 11 matches to 10. Touching ball. I always think in this situation when you've got a touch and ball, leaving the cue ball in the jaws of one of the ball pockets is a decent place. The ball cushion's obviously good. But it's not the best shot John Higgins has ever played. Okay, it's safe, but you're not really going to gain much from that, you would think. I think I'll just play off the side cushion into the bunch again. The reason I say put the cue ball in the, say the jaws of the yellow pocket forces Ding into playing a shot off the bunch. Where I can just keep playing these little containing shots. John Higgins is not getting an advantage from it. Well, it's a bit like the break off shot, Stephen, now. So many times a red is left out in the open from the break. I made a point on Twitter the other day that so many players. Break off in the old conventional way, swinging the cue ball around the angles, leave a red on. Whereas if you're playing off the bunch, you probably would just play plain ball. But why do players break off in that way? Because it can go wrong now. The way that uh, the leading players knock in long pots. I don't think the break off shot is a huge advantage anymore. I think John could probably cue this red to the right corner, the one above the pink, but like Stephen said, he's just been stopped slightly in his tracks. He, I'm looking at something different. Big target out behind Brown and Green on that cue ball. Just got the red a little bit thick. Oh, pretty good. Just have to be careful not to catch this too thick. And the cue ball into the jaws of the right corner pocket. Foul. No, in fact, he, John <laughs> he, ball. he missed the jaws. He went in off. Strange how it works out better, doesn't it, to go in off than to rattle the cue ball in the jaws, come back into the middle of the table and leave the frame up to your opponent. 
now John will have a look at this long red from hand not easy but he can make it easy by playing it absolutely dead straight this is a real queuing test didn't play it with a lot of confidence you have to say bring that cue ball back to the bulk end I always think those types of shots if, if you've got an element of safety in your mind it just it takes a bit of that concentration away from the pot you're more concentrating on getting the cue ball safe I always think if you're going to go for it go for it It just shows how easy you can go cold in a match. And it looked like missing 15, 20 minutes ago. Well, he was up quickly. He knew he'd hit that badly. Yeah, it looks ragged all of a sudden, doesn't it? Even the attempts at snookers in the previous frames, frame war weren't great. Well, there's one of your favourites. Nice insect on the table there. Steve, I know you're a big fan of that when you're playing. Mind you, I don't anyone particularly likes it. <laughs> well, I think I would, it's a wasp. I'd like the referee to do something better than just flick it away. But <laughs> <laughs> That was a nice, solid strike. Yeah. Crisp. Nicely on the black. Something happened to the Masters one year. When you never used to get beaten in the Masters, something came out of the flower beds, didn't it? And that was the biggest danger you had to losing. Well, that's on the floor now. I apologise to anyone who's upset by this, but I won't stand on it now. Get rid of it. It's on Ding's waistcoat. I mean, that's hey. just, I'm going to have nightmares tonight. It is as well, goodness me. Nine. You've always said it as you see it, Stephen. That's what you think. I'm not far behind you. Meanwhile, back to the the snooker, the most important 16. thing, thing. It's starting to look pretty good in this match. There's a, a beautifully struck opening red. 17. And this is where it does all of his damage. And that black ball normally has the cue ball on a very tight leash. Never seems to travel a lot of distance, the cue ball. And I won't be happy with that shot. Just when I said his positional play was excellent, he's left himself low in this red. He's going to have to go up for well, one of the five colours that's on the other end of the table. Didn't want to do this. Twenty five. This is a beautiful shot. Beautiful positional shot. Twenty seven. It's always been the hallmark of his game at his best. Played a series of easy shots after another because of his touch, his control of the cue ball. And when the frames go scrappy, it doesn't really suit him. Twenty-eight. So 
got a great pedigree in the game. He's won, as I mentioned earlier, the UK Championship three times. He's a Masters winner. He's been in the World Final amongst That's all the five. other big events that he's won. He's got all the hallmarks of a great player. Thirty-six. Yeah, he seems to have been around a long time, but he is just thirty-three years of age. Snookering terms, he's got a good, you'd think, a decade ahead of him at the top level, at least. Forty-three. Forty-four. I was not sure if you can get any of the five reds. He's looking at the red that's in the black cushion. A lot of the time players don't like to play for these. And he's left himself just ever so slightly a more acute angle than he'd, than he'd like. Fifty-one. I'd say these tables you will know, play a little bit easier than the star tables on the cushions. And it's difficult to tell from that one because it was absolutely bang in. But uh, what is it? Thing you look at, and I think players watching who are playing later in the week would be seeing what they're going along the black cushion like. As I say, you hit that one so well, I think that would have gone in on most tables. 59. Sixty. Not the most straightforward cannon that he had to hit both reds. That's why he's not perfectly behind the black. Ball. I think he just thought he just had to make sure pot the black and he was going to be you know nicely on one of these reds and that cue ball just drifted towards the left cushion this is now not the easiest of frame balls now not mathematically but red color we'll bring him level at 2-2 but this is now tricky Obviously feels the enough isn't on to the right middle. Maybe it is because he's raising the butt of the queue. Yeah, that's what he's bothered about. Trying to force an angle. And that's caused him to miss the red. Chance for a counter-attack for John Higgins. Yeah, and playing it a bit more pace might be the reason it stayed up in the first place. Played it slower, that would have probably gone in off the jaw. One. There's not been many better players in history than this man now that win frames like this. 60 odd points behind coming to the table and having to dish up. There's not many I'd pick in front of John to do this job. He's kind of made a career out of it, hasn't he? When Mark Williams won that world Eight. title, a couple of frames John stole and I remember Mark saying, well, I know he's going to win the front mirror anyway, so no. why worry? But it's still got to be done. There are a couple of awkward reds. The red on the right and the left have got to be got behind. Sixteen. 
17. Obviously the red, you know, the red 24. cushion is the the problem for John Higgins, but there is enough room to play on it. Get the cue ball near that right side cushion. You have a choice of the red to, to this corner pocket or the left middle. 25. Little grimace. Because he's landed dead straight in the black. Shouldn't be a problem though. More to do with the cue ball than he wanted. Let's play it well. So yeah, that cue ball on that right two. side cushion from this black. Just came round to see if it went to the yellow pocket because that would give him a chance for three pockets with the cue ball. It's all about putting the cue ball into an area here. Doesn't want to be straight, that's no good. It's going to have to leave a double now. No, oh, he's just off straight, but the wrong way. Yeah, he's disgusted with himself. Now, the clearance he made in the 2006 Masters final to beat Ronnie O'Sullivan. 10-9, involved a double. And it was one of the great clearances of all time. To win on the black. Well, I think he John fancied Higgins. that that was Fault. in when he hit it. it. Just hit the near jaw. Mm. I think it had that gone in, I would have really fancied him to finish the job off in the frame. He's annoyed to have been left with the double, I think. Oh, what a shot. Okay, you could say where the cue balls ended up, it was a kind of a shot to nothing, but it was still a beautiful pop. And it should have won Ding Jun Wee this frame to draw level at 2 2. The clever shot, wasn't it? Like you say, it filled that having seen the way he played it, it would have hard to think had he missed it, the red would have been Six. left on. Eleven. Fifteen. Twenty. Concession from John Higgins, who led 2-0 and Ding hadn't potted the ball. And Ding has won a couple of frames since then. Frames which could have gone either way. We've got a game on our hands now. We're locked at two frames each with everything to play for.
Balls that will be playing here this week at the Marshall Arena. And the match we're watching is very interestingly poised now. It looked a runaway for John Higgins at 2-0, but we, I guess we know the game better than that. Being as one frames which could have gone the other way, but it's anybody's now. Best of three from here. And that break off was a good one. Mentioned earlier that they're not always watertight in recent weeks. Then in the final of the English Open, I was involved in commentary. I can't imagine there's been two better long potters than Judd Trump and, and Neil Robertson. And every time well, something was left at long range, it was frame over. John's got any ideas about getting in somewhere in where the brown is or behind the brown from this shot. That side of the table is not too bad. If that's what he tried. Mentioned the head to heads of which Dingy we is slightly in front. He had a win at the World Championships 2015, 13 9 over John. John won in a decider here at the Champion of Champions in 2016 amongst the many matches. He doesn't want that one back, Dingy we covering the red. Beautifully struck. Again, clever cue ball. You can see he's not left anything on, should have missed the red. Just got to give this his full attention. And after that lovely opening pot, great opportunity. John Higgins to well basically get back to where he was Eight. in the first two frames. Nine. It's always nice to be the player that gets to the stage of one frame from victory. Two bites at the cherry to get the job done. I just think that he wanted to land behind that 14. red by the black if he was in a pinpoint place, perhaps he could have done. Clearly, not where he is. Yeah, he's very disappointed he didn't 
leave himself on that red and these I don't know where the black goes to the right corner so this isn't easy to get nicely on the next colour when the object ball is close to the pocket yeah it was 15. never a gimme in terms of getting good position and well he'll be fuming inside John Higgins 2-0 up cruising looking like going 3-0 and all of a sudden got a match in his hands Ping ball. Nice pop. Is he on a red? Twenty one. Three shots, he's, he's got further and further out of position to the point where uh, it might not even take a red on here. There's a couple he could get to, but they're risky. And as Stephen said, he's probably annoyed that he's left himself here, but there's no good playing shots in anger or frustration. You have to walk away sometimes. Definitely heading up the table, whatever he plays here. Well, that was a nice pot in the end, but it was an even better kiss. Held his hand up just to apologise to his opponent. Landed beautifully on the pink. It's in the green pocket. He could play a cannon into the bunch if he chose, but he might try again to get on that red next to the black. Which he has done. He knows he's got a red to right middle, should he not get on the red. 28. It's hard work this break at the moment. Oh, I agree with you. There was an argument to go into the bunch there, but I suppose might have been able to look ding in the eye had he got on the pink perfectly, then use the pink to go into the bunch. Definitely a chance to play that shot. Twenty-nine. Not a very typical John Higgins break this, but he's still going. opened beautifully still not on the red <laughs> that he's had his eye on throughout this entire break the one next to the black maybe starting to annoy him that red if the black was in play this would be formality you'd think to win the frame 35. he's got plenty of options here hasn't he even those two reds lined up there's a plant, but you won't even be thinking about that where everything else is. Yeah, he might even be able to win this frame without getting that red by the black now, given where all the other reds have gone. Ideal. We need a cue ball to travel another inch or two. It's never easy to keep being right side of the blue. The last thing he wants to start doing is taking the cue ball in and out of bulk. Four, which he's going to have to do. So you think in between yellow and pink twice on the way up and on the way back down again.
I didn't think it would go that way. 46. Yeah, he's not at the woods yet, is he? No, sorry, Steve. I think he sort of shot. He'd play with a trace of left hand running side, but he didn't seem to have anything on it, did he, in the end? As you say, I thought up and down through the same gap twice. Again, a difficult shot here, just to get not so much the pot. It's more a question of getting out onto the colour. Didn't seem to know a great deal about that one, did he? Well, he's never had control of the cue ball for virtually the entire break. And it's finally caught up with him, as it so often does. John Higgins, 47. Second prize, but at least not only has he got it safe, he's put the black out of play, which is in his favour with his lead. about that that's not a great shot it's lucky he would never claim to have got in behind the pink deliberately the keyboard was running a little bit out of control yeah a couple of very nice pieces of fortune this frame involving the pink ball for John Higgins it's hard to see how Dinkin not leave John in here. Just one of those times you just basically hit and hope. Well, he's played a, a proper shot, as it were. That's fabulous. Your mate's back, Stephen, by the blue. Goodness me. I don't know, probably. Yeah. Uh -oh. yeah, that's how we deal with them. Right. The, 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 the insect is not going to come back, I'm afraid. It's gone. It was a good shot from Ding, but I still think he's left a red. It was a great effort to finish there. Interesting shot. I mean, One. the hit and hope you mentioned is something that Ronnie O'Sullivan employed during the World Championships, and I think there was an argument there for Ding to just hit that as hard as he could, hope to fluke one, knock a ball, save anything, because it was so difficult to think of just putting himself in a position where he'd leave it safe, playing in behind that red. It was a, almost a miracle required. Six.
seven. So one good positional shot here, I think would be end of frame and give John Higgins that lead. One up, two to play. Probably a frustrating frame this Nine. one for Ding Jin Wei, having fought back from 2 0. Basically, he's just seen John get a little bit of fortune. Ten. Now the red over the pocket. This is frame ball with the red available as well. He's found a way of getting his lead back. Thirty-four. Thirty-five. Exactly the three frames that John Higgins has won, he's won very easily. Doesn't make any difference, of course. You feel that Ding has been just hanging on in there. Because he still has a chance. Forty-one. Forty-three. John Hing is 61 and different. John is happy not to play the black and he's back in front. He was 2 0 up, pegged back to 2 2, but John Higgins once again in front. He's 3 2 up and he's one more frame for a place against Neil Robertson tonight.
Uh, that is what they're playing for. John Higgins has been champion of champions before. Frame six, John Higgins to break. One up with two to play. Managed to get there in the previous frame. Took him a couple of visits. Total points are interesting, aren't they? I mean, the, the frame between them, but 418, 164 in favour of John doesn't mean a lot. It kind of tells you the story that the frames that John Higgins has won, he's won out of sight. Not the best break off, and Dingham and we a little bit surprisingly refusing the red to left corner. I suppose he thinks his next mistake could be his last in this match, but I still think you've got to be aggressive. And he's not played a great safety shot. I bet he wishes he took the red on now. Played that nicely, almost. I don't know, it's a, a silly thing to say to hit a shot too nicely, but he almost got too much grip on that cue ball there. Obviously, wanted to come out further into the table for a black that he couldn't miss. I'm not 100% sure where the cue ball's going up here. And he's missed the black. So, a reprieve Five. for Ding Jun Wee. John Higgins, one. Ding Jun Wee, seven. Yeah, I suppose he had half an eye also on what was happening to the cue ball, and he knew he'd ever cut it straight away. Oh. Bit of an early plot twist here. Dealing with a, a good opportunity now. Interesting opening red he's playing, I'm queuing over the other red. think of players who would have played the one that he could cue more easily than that one. Eight. He's not played that as well as he would have liked. Again, this red, you're going to give it a bit of attention. It is missable. I wanted the cue ball to be a little closer to this red. I wouldn't expect him to miss it. Nine. Fifteen. Twenty-two. Twenty-three. Certainly been a good match so far. The way that John started, the way that Ding Jun Wei has 
battled. That's not too bad. Sometimes you have to just win close frames. Just to stay in a match. John has won the close frames today, which is kind of how you may not have seen this match go. He's such a good player in the, the tight, important frames in a match, but Dingham has won a couple of those. Seems it could have gone the other way. Thirty-six. It always looked like being the the tougher of the two semi-finals to pick a winner, but the way John Higgins 36. started, it looked like going the same way as the first semi-final. So you can see he just finished straight on the black, so. Just to force a little bit of angle, put the black into the right half of the pocket as Ding looked at it. 44. Forty-five. Cue ball just going a little bit closer to the cushion just to make this black possible miss. Guaranteed to be in the red automatic position should he get it. Well, I guess he's always been the kind of player, no, no one's ever gone into a match with Ding we thinking well this is a good draw for me. Even though he hasn't always played to that level but when he won the UK Championship he beat Carter, O'Sullivan, other countrymen, Dan Wenbo, and uh, Yan Bing Tao and in the final, he played, I thought superbly to beat Steve Maguire. So he's all still there, isn't it? It's just a question of seeing it all come together. 48. Yeah, at his best. Six. I think he's a top four player. But he doesn't bring out Six his best. One frequently enough as I said earlier in this match to be up on, on the regular winners rostrum with a, with a sort of serial winners he should be up there 68 well we're going to a decider hard to pick a favourite really for the decider you'd think you normally think 69. the person, the player who wins, the, you know, the frame to make it that way has got the momentum. But two such great players, one mistake could cost you it. Well, I guess of the two 76. players, Ding is happier to see the decider because he was in trouble at two 0 He would have taken a being into three all at that point. I suppose John will be annoyed it's come to this. I, I guess. 77. But he's too experienced for it to be anything really to worry about. I'm not riding on this next frame. Ding Jin Wee, 77. For John Higgins. And different. That's some good stuff from Ding Jin Wee, a 77 break. His highest of the match, and it's locked at 3 3. John Higgins 3, Ding Jin Wee 3. 1 to play. A very interesting decider to come. Don't miss it.
deciding frame. John Higgins has led 2-0, he's led 3-2, but frame. he's been pegged back on both occasions. Dangerous way to break. And whoever wins this frame plays again tonight against Neil Robertson. He beat Jimmy White 4-0 earlier. Ultimately, the four players who started the day, we will have one semi-finalist in this year's Champion of Champions. These matches fairly short. Best of seven tonight is best of 11, so the rewards are a chance to settle in and play another former winner of this championship. Neil Robertson won last year. He's won this twice. Whoever wins will have a real job on their hands. John will feel he's missed a trick there. He had his hand on the table. And he's one of the few that he's missed at long range. Not sure if the that red near the black spot is, is stopping a, a colour being spotted there. So if it is, I was going to say that Ding John Wee wants to play for that red as quickly as possible. Because the pink spot's covered, so that means he can Six. pot the pink, get that onto the black spot, and make scoring a lot easier. Seven. I think that's break build at the highest level, isn't it? It's sometimes just the vision to work out which reds you need to pot, which way you get onto a colour. Now, Stephen said it was a good way to, to free the black spot early. Now you would think, nice angle on the blue. And go into that red that's on the pink spot. It's a pretty big target to open the reds. You'll have a look to 14. see if there's any plants in the pack that would perhaps push reds towards either corner pocket. It doesn't look to be the case. I don't know if the black's going to end up going close to that left corner or not. Played it well. How's your luck? Looks okay. I think a choice of red Nine. to right corner or left middle. And it doesn't look to be the nicest angle though on this red and cue ball and object ball are quite close together. So if he's going to play top spin here it's quite tricky. Be careful you don't hit the cue ball twice. Yeah, it's probably a bit unlucky, isn't he, from the shot he played on the blue because the cue ball stopped dead in the middle of the table, which is usually a great sign that, that you've played the opening of the bunch particularly well. Danger wow, what Nine. a thing to happen. It did stemmed from the problem that Stephen said though, that cube and object were too close together. It just makes it awkward to play the shot you want to. In the end, he was pretty close to hitting it twice, wasn't he? Tried to do a lot with the cue ball. I think perhaps the other red to left middle just to leave himself. Maybe a half ball blue would have been the better choice, but easy to say now. What a chance for John Higgins. Everything in the open. One. Certainly a match changing moment, that.
seven. He certainly would have been fearing the worst, John Higgins in his chair, playing against another top player. Normally when they, they get that one chance in the deciding frame, they make it Eight. count. Matches really can hinge on a single shot, and uh, this will it goes on to lose the match. It will hurt Zing. The miscue just didn't like the fact 30. the two balls are so close together, and you could see how he felt after the grimace. Could be very costly. Fourteen. Mm, this is a bonus. I didn't think he was on this red from our camera angle. It really does 20. make things a bit easier. Although I don't know why he's just left himself an angle in his pink that takes the cue ball away from the three reds. Possibly the red to the left of the three goes to the left corner. That's why he's looking at the black. Twenty-eight. Well, I guess there are enough reds in awkward positions to keep Ding Junhui interested in this match. He's not over yet. John's still got a not only pot what's there, but also take one of the two four. of the safer reds to win the frame as well. It wouldn't be impossible for there to be a twist, but John is in command, it's in his own hands. Forty-three. That's an example of he had the perfect 50. angle, and he would rather play it that way than play on the red. But it, it appeared a natural to bring the red into open play. Just a little bit wrong. Yeah, I can only assume he was playing out for the pink, but that looked a natural. Was that the way he played it to make contact with the red? This black's definitely missable. John Higgins, well, It's all from the previous shot. Strange shot he played, really. If he was annoyed a couple of times earlier in the match, that really was the 
not so much the final straw, but it certainly might be if he goes on to lose the match. I think with John, what? he knows that for the most part he's been in control, has certainly been in charge and has played the better of the two. The scoreboard doesn't really back that up though. Now, the black is going to have to go somewhere and it's behind its own spot. Ding, I have to say, I don't think he's had a lot of luck in this match and he's a bit unfortunate there. Not easy, but I suppose you've got to think, well, at least I'm still in the match. Five minutes ago, Eight. it looked like it was all over. So when John Higgins cannoned that red off the cushion from the black, he must have thought himself, that's it, I've, I've won this match. Perhaps that's why he played the, the shot afterwards, just a bit of carelessness. Ding Junwe, eight. Sometimes I guess it can work in a player's favour, a chance to bring that red off the cushion, which, of course, is in Ding's favour. You have to hope that a bit of bad luck can, in a roundabout way, end up going for you. Still in there with a chance. Well, John might have been hoping to knock one or two more safe there, but nothing's really happened. Very nice shot, and you have to say, giving him a great chance, Ding Jim Wait, He can play for either red here. If he's got the perfect angle, I think I'd play for the red in the right cushion brown now. Ball. can get in right behind that red from this brown. Just doesn't want to be absolutely dead straight, which it looks to me... He pretty much is. And can he just get the cue ball away from that cushion a little bit? Possibly. Again, playing in practice, you could force this off two cushions out for the black, but you just you want to make sure you pot the red. I think you might have had a look to see if the pink will go as well, just in case he finishes short around two cushions, but this is probably the biggest shot of the match so far if he gets this right. I think he's, yeah, he's come far enough, so just drop this black in. Believe me, this isn't easy, and this pressure. We've got a new favourite. Thirty. Got to play up for brown or blue, you would expect. No, he's just 14. Made sure of the pot. And green's fine. I'm not sure if the brown pots to both corner pockets where the blue is. Well, I guess we know the brown will pot it to the left pocket, but as you say, it's a question of whether he can. 17. Get in behind it. Well, he potted the brown in there once, isn't he? Incredible sort of a match 19. this. Hasn't won it yet at all, but John always seemed to be head and nose in front all the way through. Just in the way that they were playing. Now this is a big shot. If he can get straight on the brown, then really that is perfect. They've not got a huge margin for error playing this. Pretty good. 22. Yeah, played that well. You had to be positive through the cue the ball there. And under pressure, not always easy. A little touch shot. Very easy to overscrew or underscrew that shot there, but played it perfectly. Yes, and just blue and pink left. That's all he needs. He doesn't need the black. Thirty-one. Well, this is uh it's going to be a match that will certainly please Ding Jun Wei to win it. John Higgins 
hugely frustrated. 37 frame and, and how about that? A turnaround. John Higgins led 2-0. Ding, fought hard.